uh, spend 20 minutes um, introducing uh, what we're trying to do here. Uh, and uh, the OSFO that we're establishing here at UC Santa Cruz. Um, and then we will talk about the program itself. Um, so I want to uh, acknowledge our sponsors for this conference. Uh, the platinum sponsors are Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, who is also funding the establishment of the OSFO. Um, the Linux Foundation, uh, the Inclusive Excellence Hub from the School of, um, Baskin School of Engineering, and the Center for Research and Open Source Software um, uh, that we founded, Stephanie and I founded uh, seven years ago. Um, gold sponsors are IBM Research and uh, silver sponsors are Intel. So thank you so much. Um, and so uh, I wanted to begin with a video that some of you might have seen already. Um, and I hope this works. Uh, if not, then I have to. Today's universe of open source communities has immense potential to amplify the impact of scientific research. But without the right organization and connections, all that potential could drift off into nothing. That's why the UC Santa Cruz Open Source Program Office is here to provide a center of gravity that brings together everything needed to unlock that potential. We promote open source literacy and best practices, helping students learn from open source communities, letting scientists use open source to accelerate research efforts, and connecting students and scientists with industry sponsors whose funding can propel research farther, faster. We also reveal the value of open source to the university, help navigate open source ecosystems, enable engagements that help research programs thrive, and extend the ways open source can help achieve the university's mission. Want to know how you can be involved? Contact us today. Today's universe of open source communities has immense potential to amplify the impact of scientific research. But without the right organization and connections, all that potential could drift off into nothing. That's why the UC Santa Cruz Open Source Program Office is here to provide a. All right. So, uh, UC Santa Cruz uh, Open Source Symposium is one of the. Uh, programs of the OSPO, and it is here to create communities, partnerships, and collaborations, um, and to amplify research impact with open source. Right? That is um, our, our mission. And um, the the background for this is that open source is playing an increasingly important role in society, and universities need to pay attention. Uh, and so that's why we uh, are establishing the uh, Open Source Program Office UC Santa Cruz uh, to track and promote the value of open source uh, innovation and research and innovation. Uh, so there are three top challenges that we're trying to address. Uh, one is educating students to be productive in open source communities. Uh, the second one is tracking the value of open source and making it more visible to universities and to the UC system in particular. Uh, and then broadening the engagement uh, with industry and uh, government and foundations via open source. Uh, so we do this with a number of programs and that's, uh, you know, we just started uh, with a few programs. Uh, but we're also adding more programs uh, that we're going to be talking about. Um, but fundamentally, these programs develop an exchange of uh, project ideas and um, of open source projects across uh, uh, the whole UC system and also uh, national labs. Right? And so the associate national labs uh, of the UC University of California are Los Alamos National Labs, Lawrence Livermore National Labs, and uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Labs. Um, and these, uh, this exchange is meant to bring together mentors, students, uh, sponsors, and open source stakeholders outside the university system. Uh, the, the first program that uh, does this is what, is what we call the open source research experience. Uh, it is essentially 
uh, a program that looked at the really cool features that the Google Summer of Code has, uh, which is a very distributed way of matching uh, students to mentors and vice versa. And, uh, and it's a fantastic outreach program. It's worldwide. Um, it goes, you know, Google's, every, everyone in the world seems to know about Google Summer of Code. Um, so we're working with the Google Summer of Code and we are for this year, for the first time actually established multiple UC campuses as a mentor organization uh, 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 of, uh, of the Google Summer of Code. Um, but we're also working with other uh, global outreach efforts. Um, and we are, uh, we are actually also have sponsors in industry, right? So we are actually doing more than the Google Summer of Code in some sense, we're not just uh, Google is funding all projects, but we are actually take some of code both as outreach as well as funding um, and uh, but then combine it with other efforts as well uh, this is a really cool way of finding out about projects because you you're creating strong incentives within the uc system to participate here and we find out about those projects we also find out about the funding that goes on into these projects Right, so this is actually sort of our bedrock, if you will, for this exchange that I just talked about. Um, so the second piece is the incubator fellowship. This is where uh, we are sort of taking more traditional uh, structures in in the university, like postdoctoral uh, uh, positions, and uh, and basically taking people who are in the situation of in a, in a postdoc position where they are in a perfect uh, point in their career to really amplify their research. And that's their goal, right? They have done really significant things and now it's time to, to sort of take that and, and, and take to the next level. Um, and so a lot of those um, uh, uh, postdocs have already done really significant software work uh, or are you know, engaged in open source um, in other ways uh, that, is, that made significant contributions. And so we want to give them a chance to really focus on that and, and grow communities around those efforts. Um, so we have two uh, fellowship that we give. And the first one is Dr. Oscar Elek. Uh, right there. And so he uh, is uh, uh, doing a, a fantastic project on Polyform and Polyfy and open source software platform for learning and visualizing connectivity patterns in public systems and became really famous about when, when he um, uh, helped the astrophysicists to uh, visualize the structure of the cosmos using slime mold algorithms. So, so it's it's uh, it's like one of those things where we're like, this is exactly what we want. We're looking for because it was uh, very interdisciplinary, uh, very compelling, right? And it was a it's it's a, it's one of those open source projects. I think that really we wanted to give uh, um, Oscar this opportunity to really grow a community around this. So there's a workshop about this tomorrow. Um, the second incubator fellow that we hired is uh, Dr. Emily Lovell. Um, so she is, her project is strengthening underserved uh, segments of the open source pipeline. And uh, it was kind of funny because we were sort of thinking of this fellowship as, oh, you have your open source project and you, you know, and then you grow a community around it. Um, Emily came and, and convinced us no, this should be broader <laughs> because she's done so much great work in, uh, in teaching open source and, and reaching out to communities. Um, and so we, we, you know, it was not very long that she convinced us. So it's like, okay, she's actually our uh, perfect, uh, another perfect uh, pick for the, um, for the incubator fellowship. And so she's actually leading a panel today and also uh, a buff tomorrow afternoon. Um, so really great work. Um, so 
finally, we want to create partnerships for innovative teaching methods. So one of the things that we learned at Cross is that there's a lot of innovation uh, and innovative thoughts about how to teach open source. A lot of, uh, in fact, it's a lot of graduate students who have very particular thoughts and, you know, if, of how they would have liked to know about open source. Uh, and that's, they typically don't get at the university in the regular teaching uh, curriculum. Right, and so we actually created a new course called Open Source Programming that was basically centered around this idea of one of my graduate students to submit a Linux patch. And that kind of structured the whole class because in order to submit a Linux patch, you have to learn a lot of tools and they're all useful for open source. Uh, and, and the fact that actually some of those students ended up ex getting a Linux patch was accepted was a big deal for them. So you don't get only grades, but you also get acknowledgement by a very large community, which is very meaningful. Um, so we are looking for new uh, partnerships with industry. Um, we also, we're gonna have you know, this panel today. We have uh, Stephen Wally talk about um, uh, his semester of code uh, effort. Um, so this is actually a focus of this uh, particular <coughs> Um, symposium uh, to really uh, try to energize, you know, the ideas on how we can move forward uh, here at UC Santa Cruz. Um, I'd like to, before I start a little bit about the goals for, uh, for next year, uh, I want to quickly acknowledge uh, where this is all based on. So we, as I mentioned already, Stefan and I worked for seven years on, on the Center for Research and Open Source Software. The center is very much alive, right? It's not going away because we're doing OSPO. In fact, it is a blueprint for the kinds of research centers we want to work with um, uh, throughout the UC system. And, um, and it's, a, it's, it's basically patterned around an industry university collaborative research center uh, it's a very much a, a well-known structure and in industry. Um, uh, it is located within Baskin Engineering, um, and uh, it's basically structured uh, around three principles, and you will see that they're fairly similar to what we're actually using for OSPO. Uh, one is to teach students how to be productively uh, uh, how to be productively engaged in open source communities, to fund high-impact research. Uh, that has a plausible path to open source projects and then to incubate developer communities around research prototypes, right? So, and, and, and a lot of the programs that we see now in the OSPO, we pioneered in the research center. But the research center needed to be more focused. And so we actually uh, saw that the pressure of, of being much more broad and not just being in a research center led to the, uh, to, to the establishing of the OSPO. Right, and that the research center is just too narrow. Uh, it is really needs to be more focused on particular research topics. And it's not a, a general uh, organization for all open source in the university. Um, so I, you know, Sage Weil was the person who really enabled um, uh, uh, the center by a $2 million gift. Um, Sage Weil is a former student here in Santa Cruz. He created Ceph. I don't know whether you heard about the Ceph uh, open source distributed storage system. Um, and so, uh, and, but in the meantime, over the seven years, we actually raised $2.6 million from our uh, sponsors. Um, so we, we actually did even better. <laughs> and I want to thank you know, all the uh, companies who were part of that. Uh, as, and then finally, we have a fantastic advisory committee as part of the Center for Research and Open Source Software. Um, James Davis, who unfortunately couldn't make it here, um, uh, is a faculty at UC Santa Cruz, very interested in entrepreneurship, and um, actually also the uh, former advisor and mentor of uh, Emily Lovell. Um, the cutting. Uh, who is the founder of Apache Lucene and Hadoop, um, Anisia Ruff, who's going to uh, speak later today, um, uh, head of open source program office that's actually out of date, um, oh, the head of Amazon. Um, 
uh, and the chair of the Linux Foundation Board of Directors, Karen Sandler, uh, the uh, executive director of the uh, Software Freedoms um, Conservancy, uh, Nisa Strutman, the VP of Technology and IP Innovation Strategic Partnership at Visa, uh, and uh, Sage, of course. Um, and uh, we are, this is definitely the starting point of our advice to be at the OSPO. Um, and so, um, uh, but once, five more minutes? Okay. And so, uh, I want to finally thank Stephanie, who pretty much organized this whole thing single handedly. I was more concerned about, you know, uh, uh, advising students and doing my professorial things. But Stephanie was doing all the things that made this happen. Right. And so I want to actually give a quick hand over. Yeah. Okay. So Stephanie, maybe you have a few things to. Yeah, and thank, uh, warmly thank Cynthia McCarley, who is also uh, and is helping out with the event coordination. She actually has another job and was helping me with this. And then Melissa and Adi, who are, are help, helping me with reception, also jumped in and helped. So um, we are getting an event coordinator, coordinator soon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he retired. So, um, and boy, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so Stephanie is not only the executive director of both Cross and, uh, and the OSPO Susie Santa Cruz, but she also is uh, uh, the co-PI of the recent NSF pathway to enable open source ecosystems um, award that we got. Um, that was an inaugural award from this very new directorate in, at the NSF um, of Partnership uh, Innovation Technologies. Um, so we're very proud about that, very proud uh, but Stephanie, and um, so let's look at the goals for next year. Um, so we have, uh, first of all, we're, you know, we are writing playbooks for, for, for the Sloan Foundation. That's essentially the product of their two-year funding for, for establishing this OSPO. Um, then the second thing is, uh, we just recently won a FAIRS, which is like FAIR and Open Science um, Research Coordination Network, NSF grant. Um, and part of that, and we're very excited about that, is to uh, uh, extend the open source research experience to a summer of reproducibility. This is um, actually something that works really well, I thought, for academia open source, uh, which is reproducibility. So more and more conferences uh, acknowledge the reproducibility artifacts and actually, you know, provide awards. And um, and there's a lot of production of, of reproducibility artifacts um, in, in in papers, but there's no real consumption. There's nothing that actually uh, receives these reproducibility awards and, and uses them. And so the summer of reproducibility is this idea of. Um, creating a summer project around that to both um, help evaluate or repeat or reproduce experiments of famous papers, as well as help authors to create new um, reproducibility artifacts. And then also have people study that process um, and create new tools uh, that will streamline that process. So it becomes easier to both produce and consume reproducibility artifacts. Um, then there's the post project, uh, which is, um, we're going to talk about, uh, tomorrow morning about, uh, a, a infrastructure, support infrastructure for open source projects. We have a particular project that is a incubator project from cross, but it's actually really meant to be more permanent. And we have a grant, a phase one grant to figure out over the course of four workshops that are coming up this year. Um, to to scope out on how to do that, right? And we really appreciate all your feedback on on how to create a community of research software engineers at the university um, that can both help with reproducibility as well as particular open source projects. And so, um, oops, I didn't meant to do that. Uh, so, what's the uh, So. 
we are really looking for innovative ways to teach open source to undergraduate students. And um, we also have, as you see so in, this, in the second and third day uh, of the symposium, um, a lot of exciting projects where we want to connect UC research to the wider data science community. Very exciting, you know, that that is really, you can see this not only in the computer science domain, but you know, uh, high energy uh, physics domain and their you know, genomics domain. I mean, there's so many domains that are uh, looking for, for, you know, connection to the wider data science community, which receives a huge amount of investment from all kinds of industries. And there are some really cool opportunities here. That's it. So, um, you want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the conference? Oh, yeah, let's do that real quick and then I'll introduce uh, Beatrice. Yeah. Okay. Carlos, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, you mentioned the show you see the value of open source. Yeah. What kind of value does the university respond to? Economic value or cultural value or scientific value? So, that's a really good question. I think all of, all of the above, of course, right? Um, but I found that that there is um, that that the first one, the economic value or the financial value, right, the revenue value, is sort of the driving force. Um, it's something when you make it when there's a huge amount of dollars involved, that always gets the first attention. Uh, all of these are important, but it sort of become you know you get more attention if there's more. More, more dollars involved. 